I'd now like to invite the Honourable Mr. Paul Chan, Financial Secretary of the Government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region and Honorary President of the Hong Kong Academy of Finance to give his keynote speech. Please give Mr. Chan a warm welcome. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Julia, Kelvin, Eddie, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm delighted to join the second day of the summit and take part in this conversation with global investors. In a world beset by uncertainty, we are all eager to identify and harness major emerging trends that will drive growth and prosperity. This morning, we look into a range of such potential pertinent trends from the prospects of alternative assets and private equity to the future of investments in blockchain and generative AI. As we navigate the complexities of a fragmented world, Hong Kong has also been striving to move along with these trends to foster the growth of new and promising horizons. And we will continue to thrive on connecting with the rest of the world, proactively reaching out to both traditional and emerging new markets. This has given us valuable insights into the strategies we should embrace. Allow me to take a few minutes to share some thoughts with you. My first observation is that in the face of shifting global dynamics, we must stay agile, responsive, and innovative. With changing geopolitical landscape and a new administration in the US on the horizon, the market has been bracing for potential headwinds. But there is no reason to succumb to pessimism. As a matter of fact, countries and businesses are adapt adapting and transforming. China, for example, has been undergoing remarkable economic transformation, marked by a shift towards high quality development, growth supported by domestic consumption, technology innovation, green investments, advanced manufacturing, and many more. Chinese enterprises are also expanding their global industry and supply chain networks in response to shifting geopolitics. For Hong Kong, our strategy is to continue to engage with traditional markets like the US and Europe, while focusing on cooperation on areas of common interests and mutual benefits. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to visit the US and Europe again, where I met with financial leaders, business and industry leaders, as well as entrepreneurs of different backgrounds. The key takeaways from the visits was straightforward. Notwithstanding the long shadow cast by geopolitics, there is still potential and ample room for cooperation across many areas, from urban planning to infrastructure investments to ESG standards and compacting climate change. Taking green transition as an example, this is a process <clears throat> requires comprehensive transformation of our society and business activities demanding long-term collaboration across industries, regions, and at various levels. Sectors such as aviation, shipping, transportation, and construction, along with businesses involved in trade and manufacturing, all need robust support in terms of policy, funding, technology, and talent. Given the complexity of the transformation process, we must seek innovative solutions tailored 
to address different challenges. By fostering cost regional exchanges and engaging in cost industry discussions at local level, we can uncover new opportunities for collaboration and identify promising areas of common interests for development. My second observation is that with shifting global economic gravity, the rising Belt and Road countries and the global south at large presents boundless opportunities. The global south now contributes to about 60% of global GDP in terms of purchasing power parity and accounts for over 40% of global imports and exports. If we just look at ASEAN, it is collectively on track to become the fourth largest economy in the world by 2030. What characterizes this market are rapid economic growth, young population, and an expanding middle class. And above all, they all share a strong aspiration for progress by pursuing investments in infrastructure, green transformation, and technologies. And with challenge, challenging global landscape, they are also seeking to diversify their investments, sources of investments, and asset allocation. We are making significant strides to capitalize on the opportunities present by the growth of these emerging markets. My recent visit to the Saudi Arabia exemplifies this well. Joined by a delegation of over 100 members from the financial and innovation sectors, we returned with reward, rewarding outcomes, including successfully listing of two ETFs on the Saudi Tadawu, in, investing in the Hong Kong market, signing of investment and business cooperation agreements, and pitches by our Hong Kong startups. A significant insight from our endeavors in entering the Middle East market is the importance of a shared vision. For example, Saudi Arabia undergoing economic and societal transformation has underlined in its Vision 2030 the need for diversification, modernization, and greater openness of their economy. They are also actively embracing digitalization and green transformation. When looking for opportunities in overseas markets, their focus extend beyond simply investing capital for financial returns. They are committed to fostering reciprocal investments, sharing experience and best practices, aligning professional standards and forging partnerships that will support their national development objectives. This visionary mindset fully resonates with ours. The strategic investments made by our investment arm, the Hong Kong Investment Corporation, as I mentioned in the speech yesterday, is clearly one example. What's more, it is our belief that there is the Hong Kong brand comprising, among others, our world-class professional services, solutions by our tech sector, internationally aligned standards and practices can very much contribute to their growth and development. And we are doing just that. The fund that Saudi Arabia's PIF and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority will jointly set up is a testament to this shared vision. We will be investing together to help companies with a Hong Kong and Quaker Bay area leases 
expand into Saudi Arabia in targeted sectors, including manufacturing, renewables, fintech, and healthcare, driving their economic growth while reinforcing Hong Kong's position as one of the world's leading international financial centers, as well as a rising innovation and technology center. This is a win-win scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the challenges posed by fragmented world, I have no doubt that Hong Kong will continue to thrive, adapting to uncertainties and changes. Yes, and will be the new normal to navigate in a landscape of change, adapting our strategies and harmonizing our vision with evolving aspirations of our economic partners is essential. But with all the unique advantages of our city, not least our internationalization and our commitment to innovation and progress, Hong Kong is set to remain an attractive partner for investors and businesses from around the world. Thank you.